Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. And happy Lunar New Year, Chinese New Year, and first day of spring, the spring festival. So it's uh, all that we are in the uh, the year of the water tiger. So that's uh, that's uh, what's happening this year. So uh, get ready for some tiger stuff uh, uh, during the year. Um, so let's see, uh, we're going to, uh, oh, one thing I want to, I want to thank everybody who has been uh, generously donating to the program. Uh, the, the class is free, but we do appreciate any, uh, any donations. People have been very generous with that. And I, I like to, uh, you know, to thank you. And uh, if you want to, to donate, uh, you can check the, uh, the details part of this video or check the website, rick, www.rickbarrett.net. And that'll give you the information where to, where to send things. So uh, we're going to uh, today, oh, I want to share something with you. Um, Cause it, it's apropos of a lot of stuff we've been talking about lately. And um, uh, we have some friends in uh, Joshua Tree, California that, uh, uh, David, David Zimmerman, he uh, had a stroke a few years ago and was completely paralyzed on his right side. He was like, and it messed up his mind, his speech, everything, you know, even just doing things with his left side was, were, were screwed up. And uh, he was, uh, you know, pretty much bedridden for, for most of the year. And uh, the doctor's said, you know, after a year, you're, that's pretty much it. You're kind of stuck there. And that's whatever's happened so far, that's happening. We've been talking a lot lately about reclaiming your nervous system. And um, this is apropos of that, because Susan Jordan, his wife, has uh, said, uh, not on my watch, and immediately started a program to rehabilitate, to get full recovery. And uh, uh, despite the fact that it was really grim and, you know, he just basically just wanted to sleep all day because anything, any slightest movement was just like a huge exertion. It just, uh, he just conked out. So uh, she started this program to get him going. So just a little background, they are both Taiji teachers and have been for doing Taiji for, for decades. And uh, so they're, they have that behind them. And so there's this, a, a confidence that we can do something so that the mind can, and, and one of the questions that came up in, uh, for this topic was, you know, the mind leads the chi and the chi leads the body or the blood. So the, you learn by getting your intention in place, your E, your, the higher mind that what we're calling the super conscious mind, you get that going and that leads the energy and that then renews the physical structure. So in keeping with that, they were doing a program and uh, largely influenced by the idea of what we've been talking about feeling, that is actually getting in touch with the sensation prior to the perception. That is the raw data coming in prior to what I think about it. So, um, so by just by tuning into those sensations, and gradually reclaiming first the uh, afferent or uh, sensory neural network, rehabilitating that and the parts of the brain that it shut down. So before we get into the motor or the doing part, just get, get so that the brain is starting to recognize incoming information and the neuron synapses that had been fried by the stroke well, the brain has to do a little work around. So there's a lot of redundancy in your nervous system. So you have the capacity to generate new neural connections and even new neurons in some cases. So by, that, by accessing that redundancy in the brain, they started to piece back things together. And it was a very grueling process and uh, and has been and continues to be, but the uh, 
the progress is starting to snowball so that now uh, they live in Joshua Tree, so a lot of back roads there. So he's now able to drive a car. He's able to take long walks and uh, and carry stuff and and uh, starting to get his his left right coordination back. And uh, so I just got this note from her the other day, and it was uh, uh, she talking about the uh, recovering Taiji practice. This is for dated the seventeenth, so it's a couple of weeks ago, but. Um, she said that the uh, stage one was David remembering that he used to do Tai Chi, but had no idea what the moves were, much less the sequence of the moves. So they started working on the opening movement and uh, just doing the opening movement revealed uh, how much energy blockage there was and how bad his balance was. He'd get lightheaded and need a nap after doing that simple move a few times. And then uh, we then worked up to doing the first three moves. Three moves in, is a sequence, and that was an overwhelming surge of energy and required him to take several days off from the practice completely. And then he'd repeat that cycle. At some point, the reactions to the energy subsided. While we were assisting Dave, uh, a Taiji student who was working on the 48 form, which is a simplified long form, um, when, the, uh, when the fog cleared for David, this is the form he does and teaches the most for the last 10 years. In one day, he got through a sequence of four moves. A few days later, he could add the rest of the row. Within two weeks, he was half, he was, ha had half of the 48 form back. Uh, this, uh, this time it's happening without power surges. It seems as his mind found his way, uh, his old neural pathways that remembered the form. They were still intact, but he had lost connection with them. At this moment, he could do a sequence of half the form without forgetting the order of the form. So that is absolutely miraculous. And if you know David, as many of us do, it uh, uh, just terrific. And we're so happy that he's uh, he's really making this huge, huge recovery. And they're also kind of breaking new ground in terms of how to rehabilitate. Um, stroke and and I think this has a a lot of carryover for the entire nervous system and gives us a lot of hints about neuroplasticity in general that is our capacity to regenerate our nervous system grow new neurons and keep the mind constantly refreshing uh who knows how long it can you know uh I'm going on the hypothesis that we can do this until we're uh, till we're six feet under, for however long that takes. So, uh, uh, Jonathan and I have a, a good friend, uh, Lawrence Lachan, who died last year at age 100. But you know, he I he did I thought his best work as a as a writer in um, uh, after he was 90, and uh, he did it published a, a book which I consider to be really a a, a triumph. But so there is this capacity, we have this capacity to um, do new, new things, create new possibilities. Um, so one of the questions that came up was, the E leads the chi, the chi leads the blood. So the, uh, uh, to explore that a little bit. And the idea there is that that if we initiate, we bring awareness, mindful, conscious, intentional awareness to the body, we, the chi then follows that. And so another way of talking about the way that I like to prefer is that, that we create energy by creating poles in opposition. And by bringing awareness to something, there is the, between the observer and the observed, there are two poles there. And by doing that, by holding that, you're able to then create energy by keeping them separate. So if you are the thing, that's a whole different type of energy and that's a different type of awareness. And it's also cool, but it doesn't generate energy. What generates energy is the holding the poles in opposition.
So by bringing attention to the body, um, one then allows for an energetic connection to be created. And with that comes an enhanced circulation. So um, just way of exploring it, just um, put your right hand in on your right thigh. Actually, have it touching your right thigh. And we've done a similar exercise recently, but we're a slightly different focus here. And that is you want to feel your thigh with your hand. So as you do that, as you feel that, notice that you move into the gap between thoughts. Just by paying attention, putting your awareness on the sensation. You're not thinking about your thigh. You're not making a story up about it. You're just feeling it. So the here, the E, the wisdom mind, the superconscious is bringing awareness to that point. Now feel into your hand. And just notice the circulation in your hand. Feel the pulsing there. You also may notice some heat being generated or a sense of fullness. So the energy then is leading the blood. And with that comes all the other things that are supported by that circulation, which is every cell in the body. So just now feel your left hand and notice there's a difference between your left and right hands, just in terms of the, the sensations there. But as you bring your awareness fully to your left hand, Notice that that begins to create sensations as well. The sensations become amplified. Now have the hands facing each other. You can keep them on your, on your, on your legs, have them face each other. And squeeze them together without moving. Do it without tensing your muscles. Just get the intention there to push your hands together. And notice that you're generating even more. There's more tingling, sensing, pulsing. And it's also, if you take your hands up and just, you can feel that chi ball getting, getting created by the field that is being produced by the, by the hands. And you pull them apart and you can feel them Feel them tugging at each other and push them together and pull them apart. So we're bringing our awareness to this. And we, by doing that, we are making our hands and the energy between them more substantial. We are creating substantiality through our intention, through conscious directed intention. We are saying, oh, the hands are more substantial. And notice as you're feeling your hands, you're not paying attention to your feet. You're not paying attention to your ears. You're paying attention to your hands. So, the, so wherever you're bringing your attention, that is leading the chi. And that is becoming more substantial. So those are my thoughts on it. Uh, anybody uh, have some thoughts you want to share? Scott? Um, not a thought so much as a question. Um, so when I do that, so as soon as we start doing that, um, you know, pretty much immediately my whole body starts, you know, I start to feel stuff through my whole body. Can you talk on that? And, you know, I feel energy going, you know, feel energy filling up my body and everything else just by doing those little exercises. 
Yeah, well, you're cheating, Scott. You're just <laughs> <laughs> you're good. You're going into a whole a whole system energetic connection. You're creating a, a state of coherence, and uh, and that's great. So <laughs> I'm just joking, but that's 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 where we want to be. So we want to be able to be so full of energy that we can just direct it wherever we want. It doesn't require any ramp up to make that happen. So that's we want to we want to do that, and you know. This was not always the case with you, was it, Scott? No, probably not. <laughs> so it, it's your you you've been practicing much more in the last year and a half than you have in you know in the time before, and right. a, a, there's been a dramatic shift in your capacity to tolerate more chi and to have it circulate freely throughout your body. Would not, would you not agree with that? I would agree with that. Yeah. Okay, so so I think that that fits in with this idea of the e leading the chi. That the more you're able to bring your awareness to the whole system, the more the whole system fills up. Cool. Anybody else? Nick, you look like you got something. No, no comment. Okay. Did that work for you, Peter? You're on Zoom. Are you on mute? Yes, yeah, really good. I mean, it's such a, uh, you know, profound and miraculous thing. But I like the exercise a lot. And, um, you know, it's, uh, yeah, I think it's, I mean, it's, uh, it's a big, um, it's a big direction to explore. Great. Terrific. Reed. Uh does I have never tried this, but what about having your hooking your feet towards each other? Is the same phenomena available if you do use your feet instead of your your hands? As far as because uh, I have peripheral neuropathy, bad peripheral neuropathy, and I was thinking as I was doing this, and I could feel the tingling and the rejuvenation of my awareness and sensation in my hands, maybe even as you said, more blood, more energy. Uh, I'd like to try that. I'm going to try that with my feet and see if I can wake them up because. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> that, that, that's, the, that, that's the lesson I think we're getting from, from David and Susan's work is that there really are no lost causes here. That it's, uh, it's you know, we, as long as you're still aware and, and, and ready to do the work, you know, it, uh, you can, miracles happen. And you know certainly David's what he's where he's come in the last couple of years is miraculous. It's certainly unpredicted by by anything that you know the medical profession had to offer. And uh, but here he is. He's he's actually doing his Tai Chi form again. It's like you know that's crazy. Well, a technical question about that. Oh, do you just hooking my feet in and aiming at each other, or doing it sideways like this, or or try to do this as much as I could with my feet? I would say anything that can get you engaged, I would, for me, it, it's just feeling the floor with my feet. So just. Okay. Yeah, I got it. Because anything that's, that's, got something, the that's something you can do any, you know, a thousand yeah. times a day. And every time you do it, you're creating new neural connections and they start to build on each other. You say, and then that redundancy starts to kick in. And you start, you start to your peripheral ner nervous system starts to make new connections. It starts with the afferent. It starts with the with the sensory, and then you move to the motor. So first, you because we we are so prejudiced in, in the in the direction of, of do 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 that we don't really stop and actually feel. But it the feel first, then do. So this is this is a perfect uh, perfect thing for you because you're a, you're a go 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 kind of guy, and this is like something that oh I can do a meditation in five seconds, where <laughs> here I am boom and and you lock in and that's doing something. I look a little odd walking around in meetings with bare feet because I I'm assuming that bare feet is the way to do this so that just I no really yep. It doesn't, it's not necessary at all. But you're in California, you can get away with that. So it, that's uh, true. But <laughs> I'm the boss. I, I, I'm the boss. You're the boss. You get to... 
<laughs> so I yeah. just think it'd be easier to feel than through my socks. But so anyway, I'll I'll work on it. What it what, whatever it takes. I mean, if you got shoes on, you feel the shoes. <clears throat> it doesn't matter what you're feeling. It, I got it. What, yeah. you, what you're talking about is refining your nervous system. And and if you you know can walk on a beach barefoot, do that too. You know, and uh, but with uh, you might find walking barefoot maybe challenging with the neuropathy. I don't know. That's uh, but the important thing is particularly with something like that where you're getting a pain signal from a body part. And this is true in any, anything. If you're getting a pain signal, there's a tendency to cut it off from our awareness, to 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 put the mute on that. But it. It's it's signaling you and saying help help me, and 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 so if you can tune into that feeling, even if it's painful, then you're you're saying what are you trying to tell me, foot? You know, what are you trying to tell me? And the pain will alert you to the fact that healing is occurring. Yeah, waking up like hands when your hand falls asleep. Exactly. It exactly hurts in that. the middle, not on either end. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Scott, yes, I'm. Yeah, I just wanted to add that after you've practiced that for a little bit, Reed, what I find really helpful is try and feel one foot with the other and switch back and forth. Mm. I find that really seems to very good a lot of connections for some reason. Like put your one foot in front of the other like that. I just don't know. No, just, just feel 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 one foot, feel the other foot. Right. Well, no, feel like feel like feel your left foot with your right foot, like you oh, feel okay. the with your leg. Like how we had us feeling our hand with our leg, feel your left foot with your right foot, and your right foot. They don't have to touch. After you've practiced it for a while, try that. I, I would try that too. That works really good for me. I'll give it a try. Thank but you. also, just just bringing your awareness to your left foot, bring your awareness to your right foot. Yeah, both at the same you're working time. Working with yes. different side, yeah. different hemispheres of the brain when you do that. So your left foot is controlled by your uh, by your right the right side of your brain. So you're awakening that and you're also creating hemispheric synchronization when you do that. So all this stuff is, is good. Rick. Yes, uh, every morning, first thing I do, I get up, I don't get up. I, I move off the bed, I sit on the edge of the bed, put my hands on my knees, right hand, hand feel knee, knee feel hand, left hand, hand feel knee, knee feel hand, then foot. Feel floor, floor, feel foot, both feet. And I don't even start my day until I've done that. Beautiful, beautiful. That's great. Good, good. That's a good hack. Beautiful. Cool. Okay, moving on. Um, I was inspired by, uh, by David's thing there, David and Susan's thing, because they're... Uh, what are they doing? They're, they're creating these new neural connections by exploring activities which feel really weird to David. Things that used to be rote, things that you know he he had down doing you know a, a form he you know he had, he had it, he could do it in his sleep. Now he doesn't remember it. His body doesn't remember it until he practices it, and now he's starting to remember it. He's waking up again. So, um, but there has to be a tolerance of chaos, a tolerance of the uncertainty, the, the, the I don't know that comes into this. That is where the work gets done. It's not in repeating the same thing that you've done a thousand times and just doing your reps. It's going to some place where you don't know and you're in that in the chaos, and that's where the magic happens. You are uh, where the wonder, the awe comes in. So, uh, if we're learning some, doing something simple with our bodies, but doing it in a different way, has has an effect of awakening new neural connections and with it also the energy. So just because I talk a lot about the nervous system, that's just the thing I'm into right now, but 
I'm trying to ground a lot of this woo-woo stuff in language that will communicate to a, a broader populace. Because, you know, many of us are, you know, really, oh yeah, I feel the chi, yeah, okay, sure, yeah, I would do this. And, uh, but there are a lot of people who don't. And there is a, a spectrum of interaction with the world that you get to be any, wherever you are on that. And a lot of people can feel the woo-woo stuff. They, that's fine, but they can't do anything with it because they haven't done the other work, which is to actually embody the energy. It's, it's really cool to be able to feel the energy, but if you can't embody it, if you can't express it physically, then you have no jin. And if you have no jin, you know, your, your Kung Fu is not, not very good. So you need you need the 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 gin to be able to to do something with that. So what we're practicing here is learning how to transform anything, any simple movement into gin. It's not like oh I learned these magic movements and then I then I will have superpowers. It's like no no I want to be able to with a flick of the wrist create magic. So that you're using your, your energy, you're leading your chi with your E, with your super conscious and expressing it through the body. And, but you're gonna get resistance from the body because you're going into that, that space where there is, um, uh, there's uncertainty. You don't know what's going on. You're, you're, you're trying to discover what's going on. So um, we're gonna do a little exercise. Um, first, I'll just give you, um, I'd like to give you a demonstration. Ray, you want to give me a hand with this? She, she's not happy about that, but yes. Um, so we're going to uh, show you what, uh, what is it? It's a very simple thing. We're going to do something like that. Um, it's odd, but it's, um, it's an opportunity to to express the jinn in a different way. And the, the very simple thing is this. I'm going to reach out my hand and rotate like that. So, and if you were to think of like, oh, I'm going to push someone away, that's not how you're gonna do it, right? You're gonna, you're gonna like that. But in a number of martial arts, this is something that comes up. That looks like a really awkward, weird, weak kind of movement. But it's something that if you use it to, to express Jin, it becomes a thing, right? So if Marie grabs my wrist, right? And, and uh, I try to do that, I, I'm gonna just push it and she's giving me some resistance. And I'm trying to do that by pushing from my shoulder and nothing's gonna happen because I just, I, uh, <laughs> there's a, uh, the shoulder is, it, it is, a, it is a weak muscular connection. But if I access my gin by first feeling my energetic coherence, my index finger, reaching with my elbow, feeling my elbow, feeling my wrist, and then It's weird, but magic happens. So it just goes, and she's giving me a lot of resistance. Now I feel my finger, feel my elbow, feel my wrist, and just rotate my forearm, and it something happens. We're using gin rather than li, which is just crude muscular force. And gin, as we you know talked about a couple of weeks ago, it's a combination of li, muscular force, and chi. But the closer you can get to just doing the chi, then it gets interesting. So even once you get get the hang of that, you, you get like this, then it just, you don't have to do much. It, the move almost, you're in my mind, I'm, the, the energy was, was going along, but my arm hardly moved. It just, just boom like this, and it creates that, that effect. Now Maria tries it. And we're going to get uh, your which arm, your right hand, right? Okay, so 
gonna push and I just get, give a body, go ahead, and you're pushing push. me. You're, you're, you're just gonna do whatever, yeah. Just go ahead. And it, it's not gonna work because that's just a not very strong muscular connection. And you're gonna, you're gonna hurt yourself. But she feels her index finger, reaches with her elbow, so it opens up the shoulder joint, disconnects that muscular tension in the shoulders, feels my hand with her wrist, and then just rotates her form and reaches out. It elevates me, it lifts, lifts me out of my shoes. And it's something that you have to follow that sequence because if you don't, it, it just gets jammed up. But you feel the elbow, feel the, feel the finger, you feel the elbow, you feel the wrist, and then you rotate and bing. So, so the, the, the motion is very simple, it's like that. But we're gonna, what we're gonna do is play with that and just do that as a repetitive exercise. Thank you. We're gonna do it as a, uh, I'm gonna repeat that. First, I'd like to go through the, uh, the three pillars, get that set in. So once you stand up, because I like to, to uh, start with the three pillars, because that gets you your energy opened up, grounded, get you coherent. Okay, so now feel the balls of your feet. And allow your weight to settle over that, to center over that. The weight is spread throughout the foot, but you're feeling the balls. And you're feeling the floor with the balls of your feet. You know, your toes touching the floor. These are unlocked. Reach to the crown of your head. Lengthen your spine. Open the jade pillow gate at the base of your skull. Tuck in the chin. Feel that. Feel that whole body energetic connection as you plug into the big chi. Reach with your clavicular notch. Yes. Extend that upward, opening your shoulders and your chest. Reach with your elbows, arms slightly rounded. Feel your index fingers. Feel the energetic coherence. The whole body connected up as one unit. Whole body energetic connection. The whole system is this very highly refined feedback mechanism where everything is talking to everything else and energy and information is, is moving throughout the whole system maybe at the speed of light. Relax your hips, spiral down to the left, spiral down to the right, really just let go and allow yourself to sink. Now forward slightly, feel yourself sinking. And as you straighten up your hands, carry. Feel the weight in your hands. Feel the space, the air, the energy pressing down on the palms of your hands. It's like you're swimming through the air. Rotate the palms, the forearms. Reach out with your elbows. Feel your wrists, feel your fingers. Sink and press down. 
Feel the resistance. As you press down. Feel the chi in your hands now. Feel the blood, feel the circulation, feel the pulsing, tingling. Rotate your palms. Go forward slightly, and then as you come up, carry, feel, really relax your arms, your shoulders. Feel. And rotate your palms. And draw your hands in. And with your right hand, you're going to be executing a movement where you reach out and as you reach out, you're going to rotate so your thumb comes down. And then bring that back and rotate back. Do that with your left hand. Do your finger, your your fingers, your elbows, your wrists, and reach out. And come back. I'm going back to the right hand. Just right now, feel the index finger on your right hand. Maybe you point and reach with that. And feel how that connects the whole system up. It activates your energetic coherence. Now, reach with your elbow, feel your elbow, reach with that and feel it opening your shoulder joint, creating space in your shoulder joint. So keep awareness of both your index finger and your elbow. And now feel your wrist. You may have to bend the wrist ever so slightly just to, to bring your awareness there. You wanna feel that. And as you, you're feeling all three, you reach out and rotate, relax shoulder. Extend. And just feel into that, feel the lengthening of your arm. And feel the finger. Reach with the elbow and you're bringing the elbow in, rotate the wrist. Did you bring the arm back and rotate the forearm? These are deliberately simple moves so we can just focus on that which produces the gin. Feel that in, index finger of your left hand now. Feel the energetic coherence that that brings throughout the whole system. Notice that as you direct your attention there, you're letting go somewhat of the right hand. Even though your awareness includes that, your focus is primarily on your left. Now feel your left elbow and reach with the Open the left shoulder. Feel your left wrist. Reach and turn. Extend. Your thumb is pointing down toward the floor. Feel the connection in your left arm as you extend out. I feel the finger, the index finger, feel the left elbow, feel the wrists, 
Draw back with your elbow, reaching back with your elbow, rotating the wrist. Draw your hands in. Feel the right index finger. Notice we're taking some time with this. Getting used to the idea of the being and the feeling preceding the doing. Feel your right elbow. Just by bringing our awareness in a concentrated way like this, we are engaging the body mind in a way that it doesn't ordinarily, um, it does not happen that way often. So feel your wrist on your right hand. So your finger, elbow, wrist, reach out and rotate. Then feel that extension all the way through your back. Feel the space between your shoulder blades. Feel it running through your shoulder blades into your left arm. Now we have the right hand is the yang hand, the left hand is the yin hand. But both are doing work here. Now we're going to add a little wrinkle to this. You want to feel the index finger on your left hand now. Feel your left elbow. Your left wrist. And reach out with your left hand. And as you do that, reach back with your right elbow. So you're doing both simultaneously and rotating your hands. Feel the extension there. You're reaching up. Feel the the your feel between your shoulder blades. Feel the connection between the arms. Feel your elbows, both of your elbows. So in that superconscious state, you're able to expand your awareness to be able to include all these things at once. And you don't have to focus on all of them because they're very, very present. You can shift your awareness to any one of them at, at any time you want. So now feel the, ball, the index finger of your right hand, right elbow, reach, open the shoulder, feel your right wrist and reach out and rotate at the same time reaching back with your left elbow. Feeling the two interacting. Left index finger, left elbow, left wrist, reach and turn, draw back with your right elbow and rotate both hands. I'm going to leave your left hand out there. Feel the index finger, elbow, wrist. Feel that connection between the arms. And without drawing the left hand back, you're now going to feel your right index finger, right elbow, right wrist, and you're going to reach forward and rotate that. So both arms are extended. Feel that energetic connection between them. Feel the index fingers of both hands, both elbows, both wrists. Feel the connection between the shoulder blades. 
and draw back, rotating, reaching with the elbows. Shoulders are very relaxed as you do that. Feel your hands now. Feel the density of the field that is pressing down on them. Feel the, the energy at the Lao Gong points in the, in the palms of the hands. Rotate your forearms, palms down, press down. Feel the circulation in your hands, your feet, throughout your whole body. Notice that you're in a super conscious state. Feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee spiral down to the left, sinking into the right leg, floating up and step in with the left foot. Take a deep breath, inhale. As you press down, throw away the chi, disappear it. Allow yourself to shift into that, into the eye of spirit. You identify more with that insubstantial state. Take a seat, please. Hmm. Hey, Stan. Okay, I uh, just had a curiosity. I'm feeling it in the uh, extending the hand and somewhat uh, with the uh, left, but throughout this whole thing, it seems like the cap, I'm uh, not trying to uh, sort of squat down or anything really hard, but uh, the calves and uh, it seems like it's uh, something is running up and down like rods or something, but the calves are at all times. I'm not paying attention to them, but I know that they're like full or whatever like that. Does that sound right? The full? Like full, really full. Um, and I'm not tightening, I'm not tightening them or anything. Is it painful? No, hardly. <laughs> it's, it sounds, <laughs> it's new it's, it's good new. right you're saying it's a yes. good thing okay yes, <laughs> yes it makes sense it's it's <laughs> it's what one what one would hope for is that okay. one, would get, one would get full calves <laughs> very good very good thank you carry on <laughs> yeah, <okay. laughs> oh cool uh, how'd that go, uh, Lynn? Um, wonderful. And I really noticed um, the big expansion of the breath. I wasn't trying to breathe deeper, but everything was was opening up and, and I had a lot, the breath was going, you know, chest yeah, chest was open as well. And it was really felt much bigger than it does when we often do this stuff. So, I mean, 
Terrific. Good. Anybody else? Richard. All done. One. Sorry about that. I, I just had a kind of an unusual sensation when we- Are you on mute, Richard? I can't hear you. Oh, no, I shouldn't be. Did we lose the, oh, we lost it. We, we lost the we speaker. They <laughs> lost the speaker. Uh, the speaker can you nice. shift to, uh, see, I think we need to, let me turn that. Hold on one sec. Get, can, uh, can, can others, can others hear, others hear me? Oh, I, Yes, we got yeah, you now. We got him now. Um, I, I just had a, a very unusual sensation when we went from here to here. Um, I felt as though the energy was looking for the right path to connect. And it, and it ended up connecting very clearly between the two backs of my wrists. Okay. Cool. Yeah, you give that to him. So, uh, so you felt it uh, very in the backs of your wrists. Yeah, cool. The, the connection between the two wrists. It was, it was sort of like the. It was sort of like there was a search for the right pathways to connect. Nice. Uh, great. And that, that's what we're hoping for. We're hoping for what else is possible. We're hoping we're looking for for the magic, like oh, <laughs> it uh, that that. The unpredictable going happening. That's surrendering to the to the moment, surrendering to the to the uncertainty of it all. And you say, oh, what is this about? Peter. Yeah, the class tonight, this was really wonderful. It reminds me of something I say from time to time, which is that, you know, the I think the infinite tends to be underrated. <laughs> 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 well put. <laughs> That's real irony. Yeah, when I, when I first said that, I didn't think of it as a joke, but it always makes people smile or laugh. I mean, uh -huh. often. Does. And I don't totally understand it. I mean, it's humor is mysterious, but um, yeah, the internet tends to be underrated. Yeah, no, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> No, oh, okay. Anybody else? It's a good bumper sticker, Peter. Yeah. Um, so, bringing us around, uh, anything you can do if you bring that mindful, conscious, intentional feeling to it is going to create a transformation. You are going to transform at the very least, your body mind by, by doing that. Your ability to transform things beyond that is also a possibility. So, but it starts with, with that. Starts with feel first, then do. Getting comfortable with the non-doing so that we're able to, oh, okay, I can feel this. And you're getting, you're allowing your, your nervous system to catch up because it's, uh, it's kind of running at full speed a lot of the time. So, um, but this is also the foundation of Jin. So when we did that demonstration, Maria and I, you know, it, this is what we're looking for. You know, re, you were talking before about martial arts. You, got, you know, finding a teacher who's, a, you know, a, a mar, has a martial arts or a kung fu kind of orientation. And this is the foundation for any of that stuff. It's not about you know breaking cement blocks, you know, with your head and and uh, uh, you know, it's about being able to calmly, quietly, intentionally transform first your body mind and then the world around you as you know with your intention. And the the more you're you address the health 
and wellness of your body mind, the I think the easier it is to actually create effects in the world around you. So it's mm. uh, it's and you get to you know get to have a happier day if you're not in pain. So that's that's kind of <laughs> yes. And I, I feel very strongly that we have the capacity to heal in ways that we we don't, just don't know yet. We we have we have not even tapped. We have not begun the conversation. And uh, so, the best is yet to come in that respect. But it starts with this. It starts with just slowing down and bringing your awareness to the present moment. Get out of your story for a moment reconnect to your body mind in a way that allows for body mind integration which then opens up the eye of spirit and allows you to access energy and information that is inaccessible to the eye of mind mm. and when that happens you get the magic yes. we like that <laughs> I agree. <laughs> right. Thank you all so much. Happy New Year. Thank you. Thank you. Happy New Year, everybody. Bye bye. Thank you, Maria. Bye, Maria. Bye, you guys. Bye.